Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Morning. 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 This is uh, the Human Resources Committee meeting. Um, reading out the fire procedures and mobile phone. There is no fire alarm scheduled for the, this morning. Therefore, if the fire alarm please uh, sounds, please evacuate to the building immediately. The fire exit is located at the rear of the room and go down the stairs and meet in the War Memorial Park. Please note that this meeting is being webcast live on the internet. Yes. The webcast will also be published to YouTube after the meeting. Please can all members and public switch their phones off or turn to silent. Thank you very much. Uh, first agenda item is apologies for absence and substitutions. We have apologies from Councillor Capon, which, who is being replaced by Councillor Saunders. Next agenda item is declarations of interest. Are there any declarations of interest today? No. No? Thank you very much. Urgent matters uh, to consider any items of business other than those shown on this agenda and which by reason of special circumstances to be sp stated at the meeting in the opinion of the chairman should be considered at the meeting as a matter of urgency. No urgent items. Thank you. Next item is the minutes of the meeting held on the 17th of September. I would like to say are the minutes agreed by the committee? Agreed. All agreed? Yes. Councillor Potter? Um, I just wonder whether you've been... I'm happy to say they're a correct record, Chair. Sorry, forgive me for that. And I know this is not the norm, but I just wondered, because there's no other opportunity, on 2118, which is the health and safety element that we considered the report, um, there was mention about the uh, situation at Wade Road Depot and the disabled access. And I just wondered whether any progress had been made about a future report regarding disability access at Wade Road, whether if I don't ask it now, I don't know where else I could ask it, really. No, we, we will be bringing that forward as part of our work programme. Okay. Anne-Marie? Yeah. So um, we, w we can pick it up in the work programme, but we will bring the full report back to the next meeting, okay. Councillor Potter. But rest assured, uh, much work has been done in the meantime, and... There is not a concern around that access at this time. No. So just to clarify, the minutes are agreed. agreed. Thank you. The next item is uh, to appoint the Executive Director of Finance and Resources. So, um, as members are aware, this is the second day um, of the process to recruit to the appointment of Executive Director of Finance and Resources. So, the committee are seeing the final shortlisted candidates today and intend to make a decision on appointment. So, we'll be uh, moving into private session for the next part of the meeting. So, I would like to propose that we move into a private session. Second. Seconder. Agreed. Agreed. Just to read the notes, agreed with members that the meeting has now become confidential by passing the following motion, that pursuant to section 100A4 of the Local Government Act 1972, the public should be excluded from the remainder of the meeting on the grounds that the public interest in maintaining the exemption outweighs the public interest in disclosing it, and therefore that exempt information is likely to be disclosed as defined by the appropriate paragraph of Schedule 12A of the Act. I would like to ask the committee democratic services to switch off the webcast. Thank you. Um, I welcome back to the session of the HR uh, committee. Um, I can confirm that two candidates for the post of Executive Director of Finance and Resources have attended and made a presentation and given a final interview. The resolution for us to vote on the Human Resources Committee recommend for approval to the Council meeting of the 13th of December 2018 the appointment to the post of Executive Director of Finance and Resources. Is the committee in agreement? Agreed. Agreed. Thank you. The next item is to review um, the work programme. Anne Marie, would you like to confirm? So um, I think you haven't had a work program historically for this committee, as I understand it, and there was a request last time that we started to outline one, which Bernadette has helpfully um, just put in the standard items that you have 
twice a year. So a couple of things to be added um, that I've picked up. So the disability access at Wade Road um, report that was asked for last time, we'll bring that back to the next committee if you're happy with that. The sickness absence policy is also due for review and that's one of the policies that come to this committee. Um, one of the functions of this committee is also to consider which policies um, are reviewed by this committee. So I suggest we do that at the same time to make sure you're still happy with the list that you constitutionally look after. And also you ask for a report on termination payments and a review of the termination process. So again, I'll bring that in March if you're happy with that, uh, at which time you'll also have the pay policy statement report, which will include the benchmarking information that you asked for when you saw the last pay policy. So I think those were the main things that I picked up, but obviously we're happy to build in anything else that members would like. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Saunders? There was a, an issue on um, the late working policy um, that is over with due a response on it. And I don't think we've had a meeting subsequently to that being raised, so that needs to come back. So both for um, officers, but also recommendations for members. Councillor Potter? Just wanted to check if I might, Chair, through Anne-Marie. In terms of the financial figures that we were looking for in terms of the termination agreements that have been made, what period will that run up to? So, uh, as part of your terms of reference, you look at those annually, so they are the previous financial year. Does that make sense? It certainly makes sense. So obviously anything in the current financial year going right up to April 2019, we won't be given at that report, will we? Is that right? What I was planning to bring you next time was the review of the process, which we talked about last time. So you asked me to look at the process of termination and the costs associated with that and whether there was anything we could do to review or control those, how those were broken down. At the following meeting, the subsequent meeting, you'll have the review of the complete financial year because our next meeting is obviously before the end of the year. So you won't have the figures again until September next year. You'll have the review of the process in March. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. I mean, just in a normal way, if, if there are specific areas of information that a member of the HR committee, for example, me, wanted to get, um, I could talk to you separately, I guess. That's not in any way information that would necessarily be withheld until a subsequent report, is it? Could, can we ask for that on an individual basis? Is that permissible? Uh, so, uh, of course, you can ask for... Um... <laughs> Anything you'd like, Councillor Potter. Some of those payments are covered by confidentiality agreements, and we talked about those before. So um, the detail of individual payments would not normally be released. But if you were looking for a summary of a year to date, for example, on those payments, then I'm sure that's something that we could provide for you. Councillor Bell. Thank you. Anne-Marie, is it possible at the March meeting that we could have and up to date of year to date what payments we've had, we've paid out for this year a collective figure yes provided there is a collective figure to respond to at that point so you know if, if only one person for example had been impacted it wouldn't be a collective figure um, but yeah provided that it meets the confidentiality requirements then we can bring an update at that point and we'll be nearly at the end of the financial year at that point so it it may well be the final figure Councillor Gardner. I've mentioned it before, but it would be useful if we had some health and safety and working practice guidelines for members. I know a lot of it is covered by what is um, there for the staff, but I think something tailored specifically for members would be useful. Can we look at that, please? Are we happy to note the work programme, the revised work programme? Okay, thank you. Um, with that, that's the last item on the agenda. So uh, I would like to thank you and close the meeting at five to two. Thank you. <laughs>